Relax, the keyboard is off and the press box is closed, but the mic is just getting warmed up. Welcome to the Hockey Writer's Inc., the show where the writer is fresh off the presses and the ink is not dry. Join your host, Lance Green, the guardian of the blue paint turn writer, and co-host Steel Flyers, as we bring you all the latest on the Philadelphia Flyers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next edition of the Hockey Writer's Inc. I'm your co-host, Ron Steel Flyers, and the host with the most, the writer extraordinaire, the editor and chief, Lance Green. All right. How are you, Steel? I'm ready to talk some Flyers hockey here. Oh, man. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you, especially after that last game. Oh, snip, snap. Man, that was a... Hey, I'll tell you what. That was a great game that the Flyers played against Tampa Bay. And, man, I'll tell you what. That was some good stuff. Yeah, I definitely wasn't expecting uh, all of that, uh, for sure. So, um, you know, <laughs> to to beat one of the better teams still, you know, they're not where they were, you know, True, a couple of years but... ago. But, uh, you know, they're still one of the better teams in the East, I think. Yeah. And, uh you know, yeah. to come out and, and, you know, whip up on them like that with, without certain key players in the lineup, that was uh, pretty darn special for sure. So Exactly, and that's something that we're going to touch on, uh, a bunch of other things we're going to get into here uh, on the show today. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hockey Writer Zinc. Lance Green is your host with the most, and I am Steel Flyers Ron, and I'm here to tell you, we got episode number 157, Decisions, Decisions, Just What Will the Flyers Do Down the Stretch, and not only are we going to get into that, but we got three, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, three articles that the editor-in-chief plastered us with this week. I mean, we've got barraged by the main man, right? A, a whole plethora of great stuff to feast our eyes on. So we're going to get into all that kind of stuff, too. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for checking us out. Please hit the like and subscribe while you're down there. Put the thumbs up. Give us a great rating uh, wherever you are, wherever you're listening, however you're watching. Uh, we do appreciate that for sure, for sure. That also helps to get us ranked in other areas as well, like being in the top 15 of all Flyers podcasts for this season. That's right. Thanks, folks, for all your work and all your help. Appreciate that. Lance. Ah, all right, buddy. The first article that you uh, threw out here was kind of the inspiration for this um, uh, 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 for this show, right? Mm-hmm. Decisions, decisions. And, uh, you know, um, the article that you posted out, I mean, you, you put three articles out this week. So all of them are pretty much fresh off the presses and still, you know, the ink is still dry or wet or whatever you want to call it on, on these articles. <laughs> so I, there's a lot of decisions that are going to have to be made. And I think it ties in directly with what I want to talk about first out of the gate. Okay. Before we get into your article, because I think this is what led to this article. And correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Um, and that is the Flyers have a lot of decisions to make, and they have also a lot of injuries to deal with, okay? Sure. The IR increased this week by two more players. Ristolainen went on to the uh, LTIR. And uh, Jamie Drysdale also went on to the IR as well. And we got TK, who is still out, listed as day-to-day, but still not today. (laughs) Right? So do do you think that maybe was the inspiration for putting together this article? I mean, it definitely plays a factor into it for sure. Um, you know, the Flyers were and still are, um, you know, on a pretty good run there. And um, they're playing good hockey even without those players in the lineup. And, uh, you know, they have to kind of decide, you know, they're 
to hear to hear Danny Briere and Keith Jones tell it, this team is still rebuilding. But at the same time, you hear talks of certain players in contract negotiations that are, you know, ex- with expiring contracts. So um, it's kind of a head scratcher. I don't. It's kind of hard to get a feel on what this team's going to do. I mean, the the trade deadline is March 8th. It's fast approaching. Teams are already starting to make deals, uh, as we've seen the past couple nights. And there's definitely teams out there showing interest in certain players that we have. So, you know, like I said in the article, they're going to have to make some tough decisions. And and some of those players um, that they're going to be talking about, you know, that, that first aspect is goaltending in my mind. Um, you know, yes, you know, defensemen and stuff like that have been hot and heavy and, and receiving calls about. But this is tough, man. Uh, you know, Carter Hart, you know, nothing to do with the team right now. He's in his own troubles and all that other stuff. And I don't really want to get back into that, but, uh, see you bye. Later. And, uh, you know, Sam, big Sam Erson has been expected to step up and be the starter here. And uh, he's done a pretty darn good job of it, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later, uh, with one of the other articles, but, um, you know, it's tough because when he, takes a night off, I don't think he can even relax right now, Steele, because you have a guy like Cal Peterson no. who, you know, comes in and lets in, what, seven goals uh, against Pittsburgh. He's so inconsistent. Um, you know, the guy's making $5 million a season if he's playing at NHL, and even when you send him back down to the minors, he's still making a cool $3 million, uh against the, the books. So, you know... Man, they got to find somebody fast to help this kid out because he, if not, I think he's just going to be another number in the the realm of goaltending prospects the Flyers had that had a chance to be good, but you know for whatever yeah, reason were just out. wasted away and burn yeah. out and and everything like that. So um, there's got to be some options there, um, you know. And in the article, I named a couple. Um, the, there is a couple of names out there that you, I don't think you would have to spend or, you know, give up t- so much. I, I think the Flyers have, a, a quite a few prospects, goaltending prospects in the system already, but none of which are going to be ready to jump in for the rest of this season. Um, or, you know, even, even next season in my mind, I think they're all going to, even if one or two of them actually come over to North America, um, or to play, you know, and sign, yeah. they're going to have to play in the, the, at the Phantoms level to get some experience at least. in North American hockey for at, at least. least a year. Um, you know, so uh, I think they're going to have to do something in this regards, whether they get a veteran, uh, or whether they trade for a guy that's, you know, on the cusp of, uh, coming into their own, like, uh, like the two kids, in the Bruin system um, that I yeah. name, you know, um, in Michael DiPietro uh, or, or Brandon Bussey. Um, yeah. Both those guys are raring to go, but they just are weighed down because of, you know, who they have in front of them on the depth chart. So it, it's a tough decision to make in net. Um, but I think that's one that they're going to have to add. They're going to have to add somebody. I'm sorry. Cal Peterson definitely isn't it, but Neither is Felix Sandstrom in my mind. Uh, if not, if possible at all, I think he's worse in a sense. Um, you know, he's he's spent time down in the ECHL trying to battle last year, even to to make a spot in the AHL. So, um, you know, to expect him to do great things, come up here and, and backstop uh, the team and the NHL level is is a farce in my mind. But um I don't know. What do you think, Steele? That's kind of what I wanted to get into here, where the injuries are going to basically... It depends. See, will the injuries force the Flyers into making a decision that if they want to continue to play for something this year? 
Do you know what I'm saying? If that's a decision that they are going to make, if they're going to make that decision that they're going to try to go for something this year, then then I think that there's going to be some tough decisions that are going to have to be made. Otherwise, honestly, otherwise, I don't see this team doing much of anything other than trying to improve this team um, for the future. Okay. Mm-hmm. And if that means a trade uh, with a sealer or a walker or some combination of thereof, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and, and if a draft pick is involved or, you know, what, whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if, if something like that does go down, I think it's only going to be more about helping the team, not necessarily, you know, on March 8th, mm-hmm. You know, but I think it's going to be more of um, October 8th right? or uh, December 8th or that's what I think that the move, if any, if they're going to do anything, Mm -hmm. you know, but I'm also, there's also that same issue too, where they really need a goaltender. So they're going to have to do something Something. to, to, you, you. you're going to have to bring in somebody that's better than what you have. Yeah. And literally anything, a body at this point. Like I said, it'd be better. You need a body. I mean, can we bring back Ilya Brzgalov? I understand we're still paying him. Still paying him. (laughs) But, uh, but I, I think you were hitting the nail on the head here, especially on the defensive side of things. Um, Definitely some tough questions here. Um, You know, the Flyers, would they like to deal Walker and Sealer? Probably. They're at least listening uh, yeah, in a sense. And and the deal if, is. Right. And if, you know, guys like, um, you know, Jamie Drysdale was healthy and uh, Ristolainen was healthy, it'd probably be a lot easier decision to deal them, right? See, exactly. Uh, but, but right now, you don't know when Ristolainen's coming back. And, you know, Jamie Drysdale took that hit on his shoulder. Uh, you saw him exit. He had missed pretty much all of last season, but eight games uh, due to that particular shoulder. A labor. And, and injury. A labor he had, yeah. An injury to that shoulder. So it's definitely scary in a sense. But, again, this team goes back to contradicts themselves in a sense because – Breer says that he he understands that this team is is playing for the future, right? They they're going to be competitive where he wants them to be in two or three years' time. So if that's the case, I don't understand the the rumors of him talking to both Walker and Sealer in a sense in in re-signing discussions, right? I don't get that. Um, both these guys are in their late 20s, if not already 30 plus, and they're asking. They're both these guys have never really had a huge contract per se. They're playing the best hockey of their careers right now, and both of them. they have a lot. Both of them, and they have a lot of interest in them right now from around the league calling in about them. So the team is kind of sitting on both sides of the fence here. They. They're listening to trades because that's what they should be doing because they know they're competing for two or three years from now. And they have a lot of depth in the system. I mean, you look at Zumala still to to not be a regular every day. You got Ronnie Attard. You got Emil Andre, well, who they well, spent a I big- think Zumala, Lance, I do think that Zumala has – Probably a bigger step now, but I, I think he's more solidified than anything. I'm seeing sure. him even when when Torts was doing the 11 right. 7, Zumala was still in and and he was and like they had him at wing. I mean, he was listed at wing, but right. but but right, but it, it, it was still an, a, an excuse to get him out there on the ice. Right, and and I and it should be because he's definitely earned his 
his spot. And I, I don't think the team owes Mark Stahl anything. He's a 37 year old veteran. That's just taking a space up from some of these younger guys. And, and you can continue on in that list and Adam Jenning, uh, Helgi Granz, who we just acquired, you know, this yeah, past yeah, yeah. off season, you know, they got, and, and not to mention Oliver Bonk and everybody else that's still coming. That's not signed yet. The team has a lot of, you know, prospects within the system that if they sign back Walker and or Sealer to a deal, it's going to be only blocking them further uh, and and not allowing them to progress. And I just don't see the need for it. And especially when I just heard reports of teams like the Oilers, who are, you know, obviously playoff contention yeah. team, they're yeah, willing to deal a first round pick this year for a defenseman if a team will take on another kind of salary dump player that may have an expiring contract at the end of this year or maybe next season. Um, And the Flyers have the cap space in which to do so. I don't know if they want to necessarily get into another uh, thing like that because, I mean, we did that with Cal Peterson and how's that working out for us. But in the same token – if they give up Walker or Sealer and could potentially get a first in that sense and, and give themselves then three first round picks this year, that is something that I'm going to be willing to do. I don't think that Walker or Sealer, although I really like both players, I don't think that that is somebody that I'm going to go, you know what? No, we don't need another first round pick for a developing team that is still in a rebuild build mode. Uh, you can never have enough first round picks, um, yeah. you know, and and that is only going to that's enticing, man, to to give up, to to sign back Nick Sealer. I mean, uh, he's not. He's all not right. all that, you know, uh, um, uh, he's okay. a great guy. He can play both yeah. sides of the ice. But come on, man, I, I for a first round pick, I would have made that deal already. You know, leave it out that, been gone. I would have helped yeah. them pack their bags. Yeah. Yeah, right. And I like both a, players. And I like both yeah, yeah. Of those players. But, yeah. but you see, know, I, I, this is a rebuild. I, I don't think you're going to get a first-round pick for either one of them. I think you would get a first-round pick for both of them. But I don't think you're going to get a first-round pick for either one of them individually. Okay, bye. My, oh, but right. if you're going to get that, if you can get that from anybody, then, yeah, see ya. I don't care how late it is. What are you talking about? That's three first-round picks. Come on. You know, you can use that as leverage to get – Higher up the list. Yeah. What do you know? Oh, oh, oh. oh. anyway, <laughs> that's part of the decisions that are going to have to be made here by the Flyers brass. Um, in about a week's time <laughs> from when we're recording this show right now, I believe. Uh, so, you know, that, uh, I'll be looking forward to that day for sure. Um, it's going to be um, interesting to see, to be honest with you. Even with the injuries, if the Flyers continue to play well and continue to put up points with the roster they have right now, yeah, okay, then I don't think you're going to see, unless that <coughs> first round pick is, is going to be on the table for somebody somewhere that the Flyers can get. I don't think you're going to see the Flyers do much of anything other than try to get some type of goaltender that, I mean, a body. They just need a body, really. You know, I mean, look, let's face it. There's 22 games left for the Flyers, 23 games left for the Flyers, including the one tonight, okay? If you get Felix to play three of them, okay, cool, and then you bring some other body in, he really only has to play another 10 or 15 more games. You, you see what I'm trying to get at here? You, so it, if he's going to – I don't know. I think you just ride him because he's he hasn't really been that horrible. You know, what? he's 6-2-1 uh, and one since the All-Star break. So, I mean, you know what? Um, okay. He took on Tampa Bay the other night, and that was an amazing game, and he made some amazing stops in that game. So – all right, we'll talk about him in a minute. I want to talk about the other article that you put out this week, Lance. And, and, I, and I really like it because it's short and sweet and to the point. 
and it it really highlights the emergence of one Tyson Forster. And you know, Lance, I remember when we did the uh, draft show when he got drafted, mock draft and all that. Yeah, and we we even had him as I mean, I think that was a consensus for us that if we were going to get that player, we would be okay with him. Yeah, no, he was my, my pick, uh, That's what I mean. yeah. in my, in my mock draft articles and everything for that year. Um, I wanted the flyers to take this guy just for this reason. Um, Tyson Forrester is a shooter and he is a guy who's had an NHL caliber shot since he was probably 15 or 16 years old. Yeah. I'd uh, say that. Yeah. In, in juniors. I mean, you saw that, uh, coming up with the barrier Colts and, uh, you know, on a nightly basis, I was impressed by this kid and, um, he's, he's doing that for me now here. Yeah. And, uh, it, I think it's one of the big reasons why, um, when everybody else and Frost and Brink and everything else uh, have come in and out of the lineup this year, Tyson Forrester has stayed in there for the most yes, part. Yes, he has. And, um, you know, he's stayed in there. He's 22 years old. He's a gamer. And I think a big reason for that is his ability to really learn. Every shift he's out there, he looks like he's he's learning something. You know what I mean? And and Or if he's made a mistake... He doesn't do it again. And um, that is what you want to see from your young players, man. Uh, uh, and that, that's um, why I think it impressed uh, Tortorello a lot, in a sense, early on. Because he was snake bitten earlier on this season. And, I mean, he was getting his chances and everything like that. But the yeah, puck but wasn't was, going in the net at first. Right, but he was, also, he was also taking a lot of dumb penalties. Yeah. But, I mean, that comes, I mean? With a, that comes with a rookie. Because at the, at the same time... Um, you're jumping up into the NHL where it's another step, you know, towards it, it's the most elite, you know, of any league in, in the world. And, um, you know, that that level of play, that speed, that talent is that much more. Right. So guys that are young and, and trying to compete and trying to show themselves to their coach and their coaching staff and everything like that. Um, are going to make dumb penalties in a sense, and in, in the hook or something like that, because they're not used to that. That that's a big jump from the AHL to the NHL. I mean, yes, there's still professional hockey, and it's still good hockey down the AHL. But there's a reason why there's career AHLers because they just can't make that jump up to that next level, and you know, take that that next burst of speed that they're going to need to compete in the NHL level to keep up with the the McDavid's of the league and everything else like that. And that's why I think you saw so many dumb penalties from him at first because he yeah. had to get used to that um, speed of that NHL game and everything like that. And, and once he did, um, you know, in these definitely his last five to ten games here, he's really coming into his own. And now you're starting to see him – already be in position where he should be to accept the pass to, to, you know, be in great scoring position and all that. And, you know, and that's kind of why, you know, through 55 games now you're starting to see his stats pile up. Um, it, since I wrote this article it was 55 games. They're obviously playing right now as we're recording as well, but you know, at the time I wrote this article, he had 14 goals and 12 assists on the season for 26 points. Um, he's on pace to finish with 20 goals on the year. Um, you know, uh, another Owen Tippett, another Joel Faraby to add to the bunch here. This is what we Take had it. when the Flyers were so good a few years ago when we had seven, eight guys a year scoring 20 goals apiece or more, you know, and, and everybody was contributing. So when maybe – you know, Hartnell or Wayne Simmons wasn't on one night. The other was, you know, and that is what we're getting now where you're seeing a guy like TK go down and, you know, everybody's pulling out their hair because man, TK has been so great this year and everything like that. Well, here comes Tyson Forrester and, you know, the past five games when I wrote this uh, article, he has five goals, um, you know, so, this is this is really exciting to see this young 22 yeah. year old player um, coming into his own. And I just wrote this short little article to kind of portray that and kind of give you some real quick stats as to, 
you know, just how impressive, um, you know, his play yeah. as of late really, really has been. So, but I, I think that it's something that's worthy of pointing out mm-hmm. because everybody points to TK as, you know, the, the quote unquote main reason, but you're starting to see exactly what you talked about. And this is what this article touches on. And that is the emergence of Tyson Forrester driving the play. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So, and yes, since his injury where he missed those four games um, and even the couple of games before his injury um, and then the games that he's been back, he's got a much better head on his shoulders. You you can see that he's, it's starting to come to him. Yep. Do you know what I mean? He's playing with a really, I, I like the line that he's on. Um, I, I really think that's a good line for him to be on. I mean, the, that's the youngster line right there. You know, that's, uh, you know, so I, I'll take that all day long. And, and I just I wanted to say that it's, it's a good thing to see this player emerging because he's another reason. Just like you said, Lance, he's another player that's on track to get 20 goals. And I remember not so long ago when the Flyers had 10 players that all had 20 or more goals, right? And when you have that many players that have that many goals, you're usually in a playoff spot. Yeah. Okay. Right. Or, or fighting for one anyway. Right. And, and so uh, um, good article and I'm glad we get to talk about um, him and, and there's something else I wanted to say here real quick too. Um, huge thanks to frame for um, putting out our videos out on TikTok and out on uh, X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. And just all the great work that he does. Oh my gosh, this guy is amazing. And I just wanted to say um, big props and big thanks, uh, you know, for, for doing these great videos and, and man, they're, they're really cool. They're really amazing. And thanks for the great new setup that we got here. Uh, you know, so appreciate that. Um, uh, this guy's just really talented. He's, he's been a great uh, addition to the team here. So just wanted to give him props and thanks uh, for, for taking care of us. So we're going to try to take care of you. So there you go. Um, and all right, moving on to the next article and that's this we talked about the emergence of tyson forrester as one of the things we also talked about the number of decisions that are going to be needed to be made here by um the the new danny briera um and lance the the guardian of the blue paint puts out an amazing piece about a comparison of Arison to the other legendary goalies um, that have played um, in the orange and black. And, and Lance, I got to tell you, man, seeing your genius at work Hmm. um, and seeing these articles come to life, man, it, it was like, it was almost like watching Hextall really skating out there to go after him. It was really like, seeing Hextall with the old chop <laughs> to the shins, right? Or him ho- hoisting it down there for the goal. You know what I mean? And, and um, man, I did get to see some Pelly, uh, some games from Pelly. So um, that kid was just an amazing, amazing talent that he was taken way too soon, uh, way too soon. And, of course, Bob, I always felt was, man, we should have never gotten rid of him. Never. Uh, uh, t- I can't believe that you have the caliber of Bob and you bring in Mr. Galaxy Quest. I, I mean, um, you brought you brought in Brzgalov instead of Bobrovsky. Uh, well, that woo. you know that we can we can get into that for sure. That that is always and will be always one of the biggest mistakes the Flyers made. But, you know, I wrote this article because not comparing and and saying Sam is, you know, super elite, like, you know, Hextall is, I expect him to be like Hextall and come in and win, you know, a Conn Smythe trophy trophy and, and you know, Vesna trophy in his rookie year and all that. But, you know, his numbers 
this season are very good for a guy who has been just thrown to the wolves here and expected to be more than he is really, or or more than should be expected of him at, you know, a, a kid that's just getting his feet wet in the NHL. And, um, you know, he's, he's, He's had some experience, you know, playing in the SHL for a couple of oh, seasons. Oh, yeah, and that's, that's uh, big time there. Over, and I think that was huge. And he had a whole season last year playing in the AHL and where he came up for, I think, 12 games or something like that uh, yeah. last season and got a little taste of the NHL before this, the start of this season. So, you know, Sam is... Uh, is not a kid as, as young as we think he is. Um, he's, you know, 24. Um, he's played a lot of professional hockey already at, at such a young age. And, um, you know, I think he lives up to this challenge and he's used to playing for some bad teams in the SHL. And, um, you know, he's, he's getting the, the defense that other goalies in the Flyers' past haven't, right? I think uh, Briere and, and Keith Great Jones did point. well in coming out and gaining the guys that we're talking about trading, even Walker and Sealer and all that, uh, you know, Walker especially coming in this year, but uh, and solidifying that defense a little bit. And, um, you know, he's benefiting from it for sure. But um, I'm not going to bore you with – with some of the numbers here on some of the other guys, you can read the article. It, it really goes into detail in that, but um, you know, it'll be in the links yes. down below. You'll be able to check out all three of the articles. All you have to do is go to steelflyers.com, Check out all of Lance's articles. They are all right there on that front page. So you got to be sure to go check them out. Yeah, so for sure, for sure. But let's, let's just touch on um, some of the numbers because they, they even tri- changed since the last you know did the article um you know he's played in 33 games this year he's won 17 of them okay he has a 2.55 goals against average and a 901 save percentage and three shutouts to his credit this year um he's playing at a level not too shabby is not too shabby right i mean he's one of the better rookie goaltenders this Period. Of this season of any 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 team out there right now, and I think Carolina's is um, you know the only other guy even in the same ballpark as him uh, right now, as far as numbers goes, and they're kind of competing, you know, and and should be competing for the Calder Trophy. But then of course you got that guy, you know, Connor uh, in uh, Chicago, as well as Marco Rossi as well so um both those guys are having tremendous years and it'll probably take the spotlight from the two goaltenders yeah, there I think uh, so. just because a yeah, call it a trophy doesn't uh, tend to go to a goaltender too much but you know um, shame it, that though if, shame if that though really, because yeah, i think should. he it, should be yeah i think he should it, be in the consideration i think it's a big reason why the he's a big reason why the flyers are um where are where they are now as far as you know bobrowski I think he was one of the last great Flyers goaltenders. Um, and, and he is a guy who I saw when he first came over to training camp, even after signing from Russia. And I said, this kid is it. This kid is the guy we've been waiting for. Um, you know, I've been a goaltender for over 30 some years. I coach goaltending. This is the guy that had the pregame workout and, and meditations. And he just did everything right. And he was a he came in at a time where I think uh, God rest his soul, Ed Snyder just wanted a name. He wanted a name. He wanted a substantial piece in that. He was tired of all the carousel of goaltenders for years and years and years since Hextall uh, retired. And he kind of pushed uh, management at that point. To exactly. go out and get Brizgalov and sign yep. him yep. when they had Bob already here developing yeah. into yeah. a great young goaltender, and it pissed Bob off. And he asked for a trade, and then what did he do? He went to, you know, he went to Columbus and had two Vesna Trophy winning seasons, and he's went on to Florida to have some great seasons there as well, and you know, make it to a Stanley Cup Finals. So. You know, he's still playing, and, and that is 
something that the the Flyers are going to be kicking themselves for quite some time now. And, um, you know, he played a lot of games that rookie year. But um, right now, uh, in comparison, Sam's got better numbers, goals against average and save percentage than Bobrovsky had that year. Uh, you know, and I think he's going to play probably the same or close maybe, if to can, the same number if of can, games. Yeah. He's going to play some majority of the games for sure. So I'm interested to see just where his numbers will be at the end of the year uh, as he gets to play the brunt of the games. But you can go on uh, into it, you know, and I and I take a look at Ron Hextall and I take a look at Pelly Lindbergh because these guys came in at a very young age as well um, in their early 20s, just like uh, Sam is now and really took over the net like erson has been doing for the Flyers this year, and it just goes into some mm. of their some of their numbers uh, similar, and uh, both of which Sam's got their numbers. It's a different error for sure. Um, there's not the you know Wayne Gretzky's and Mark Messier's and Yari Curry's that uh, Ron Hextall had to deal with, but uh, you still got your players, McDavid's, and, McDavid's and, and Drysaitel, Matthews, and, and Matthews. Yeah, and I mean that kid. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, he can score some goals too. So there's still some, you know, players out there uh, in the NHL today that, uh, you know, make Sam's numbers this season pop even more um, than they than they should because, uh, you know, right now he's beating out numbers-wise, he's beating out some of the Flyers' legends, what they were doing when they were in their first year of competition uh, with the Flyers. So um, is he going to be on that level? I'm not po- putting that on that kid. No, no. Um, I'm not putting that on him. No, it, but you but can I think he's a great the... young goaltender and he's stepping up for the team um, yeah. needed right now, for sure, with Carter Hart's sudden absence. Um, man, he's doing great things right now for the team and uh Tortorello should be very very happy in what he's got and I'm glad that he's letting him play and yeah. letting him prove himself what he can yeah. do but at the same time I think they still like we said before they still need to go out and get somebody um of NHL caliber to be a back backup Something. for him to be able to let yeah, this kid rest on a night off, off yeah. and not feel like he's got to jump right back in net because, you know, his backup is giving up seven goals to the opposition who is well below them in the standings. Um, that can't that can't go on yeah, the rest of the season. Yeah. I, I, I don't care how good this kid is. You don't want to wreck him. You don't want to rush him. Um, you, you need to get him some help. So uh, three great articles that I, that I thought needed to be out there. Um, Thank and, you. And since, you know, and, and I, I, I was happy to be able to have time enough to get them out there. It's some uh, definitely thoughts that have been running through my head for the past couple of weeks, and I just wanted to get them on paper. So uh, I appreciate all the reads, guys, and uh, all the comments and stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and thank you. Thank you for reading them and thank you for tuning into the show for sure. So, you know, I got to tell you something. I, I hate to ask you this, man, just because you, you basically, um, spoiled us now this past week, but, 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 uh, anything in the works? <laughs> um, I, I'm wanting to see some games here, uh, what they're going to do leading up to the trade deadline and, yeah. um, see what just what they're they're gonna do because as far as the trades go if any like you were saying there the opportunities out there i think they should cash in uh sooner rather than later i think the league yeah, as a whole till, don't wait till the eighth do the, it now. don't don't be a chuck fletcher um and sit on your hands because teams don't do that anymore they don't wait do it to the last day they're making trades now to make sure they get the guys Have they it. want and yeah. You know, the, the the teams that are thirsty for a player are going to be willing to give stuff out now. And you're going to get pennies on the dollar on the eighth, um, you know, on the deadline trying to make deals at the very last second. So, man, bite the bullet, uh, trade, trade some pieces, get some get some draft pick compensation, get some 
get some NHL ready prospects back if you can, and uh, you yeah, know somewhere. get rid of some some of these guys so we can develop. I'd be perfectly fine with rotating in you know uh, certain players um, within the team system, you know uh, like your Rania Tards and others on the back end. Um, while Drysdale's out to see what they can do. I think you owe it to them for that, yeah. you know, to, to prove surprised. what they got. So, man, don't don't be in a rush to sign a 30-year-old guy to a five-year contract and block all of these kids that you have in the system. I mean, there's way too many to say that they're all going to just fall on their face here. Um, we got some good prospects on the back end. We we can't be fearful to to let them play a game or two. Um, I don't care what position we're in, in the, in the standings. Uh, we're playing some good hockey right now, but I think we'd be kidding ourselves if, if right now with the team that we got with no backup goaltending and the people that are hurt and uh, the lack of a true score, I think connect me is a great player. Um, but you don't have an Austin Matthews on this team. You don't have a Connor McDavid, you know, you don't have a Leon Dreisaitl to help carry that team into the playoffs. So I think we'd be kidding ourselves if you if you really think that this team um, is going to be able, even if they squeak into the playoffs, is really going to be able to compete against the likes of the New York Rangers, who are just on fire right now, or the Boston Bruins. Wow. Um, I, I think we're going to get stomped in a seven-game series. And I love how this team is playing, but... Like Briere says, they're a couple of years away still from true contention. Yeah. Maybe we can make it into the playoffs, yes, but man, yeah. I I don't know. Uh, it's a tough decision. Like I said, decisions, yeah. decisions, right? Um, do you stand pat and let these kids get a little playoff experience and be booted out in four games, five games uh, into the playoffs by a, a a much superior team, or? Do you go out and, and try to trade some some assets there that are expiring contracts and and try to get some other yeah. draft pick compensation yeah. and, and, and picks that maybe in a year or two's time will will help this team when they really have the chance to uh, thrive and, and be a true yeah. competitor? Yeah, I'm, no, I'm with you. I'm with you 100 percent. We both touched on it. I think it's a it's a, it's a major point um, that needs to be addressed. Um no matter what happens, uh, come the eighth of March, uh, no matter what, um, that whatever deals are going to happen are going to be happening by then. So, um, it wouldn't shock me to see the Flyers trying to make a move for some type of goaltending, at the very least. I think as what the Flyers are going to have to at least be entertaining right now, just based off the fact they put Cal Peterson on waivers. Do you know what I mean? He's probably going to clear because nobody's going to want that. He did already clear, yeah. Yeah, right. Today, so, so, you know, uh, and they're, they're going to need some kind of goaltending help if they're going to try to continue out the rest of this year. If not, then I guess they're gonna just going to ride with what they got. And, you know, I guess we'll just grind, uh, grind Erickson into the ground. I hope that's not the case. So, um, Lance, thank you very much for all you do. Thank you for the, the great articles and all the great stuff that you do. Um, why don't you tell the folks where we can find you and where we can get you? Yeah, you can get catch all my articles and the shows on steelflyers.com. Uh, you can catch me on X or Twitter at LanceGreen39. And you can always catch my stuff on any Flyers Facebook groups and stuff like that. I, I think I'm just about on every single one of them. Or yeah, if not playing there. A, uh, uh, a major role in, in the uh, board or whatever of those. So, um, yeah, uh, comment uh, on the articles. If you like them, if you don't like them, let me know. Let me uh, – yeah. let, let's talk some hockey. I love uh, hearing from you guys. So, uh, For sure. Yeah. Thanks, Lance. Really appreciate that, man. By the way, really appreciate all you folks out there. Uh, for clicking the like and the subscribe and and uh, all of your clicks onto the website, all of your reading of the articles and, and everything else like that. I really appreciate your support. Uh, we would, wouldn't be here if it wouldn't be for you guys, so thank you very much for um, all of that support. I um, really appreciate that. Um, Steel Flyers, you can find me on X 
at steelflyers52. You can also find me on a lot of the Facebook groups as well, uh, along with Lance. Uh, you know, I, I'm kind of part of all that big, giant menagerie of, of great, great Flyers fandom, um, great groups um, out there in the Facebook. Uh, they, they're, the Flyers fans are always some of the most knowledgeable out there, you know what I mean? And so we're very lucky we get to have, uh, you know, such knowledgeable fans. So thank you guys very much for that. We will catch you all on the next Hockey Writers, Inc.